Well, a very warm welcome again, guys. Hi, it's Kasim. I hope all is well. I hope you've been keeping okay. Um, I was on um, the student room um, and I saw a question that I wanted to give my thoughts on. Maybe you might find it useful. Um, as many of you know, I'm due to be qualified as a uh, counsellor, psychotherapist uh, in a couple of months. I've been through a lot in my life and I've spent a lot of time working in schools um, and doing workshops across schools and colleges and universities across southwest London. And I get asked a lot of questions all the time by people, parents, um, uh, carers, by all sorts of people. Um, and I've always been trying to find a way in which I can scale some of the advice that I um, that I share. And I thought um, I can start off by answering some of these questions that I see online. So the question that I saw online said, how important is looks in getting hired as a sales assistant? Um, and I wanted to ch touch on that, um, share some things with you that I've been reflecting on. Maybe you might find it useful. Maybe you won't. It's absolutely fine. Um, so the first thing that I would say is, number one, um, I really like the fact that you're asking the question because in asking the question, you automatically imply that you understand that looks do have some sort of an advantage. So the first thing that I wrote down here is looks help. People like looking at pretty things, right? Now, of course, looks are subjective. Some people may be attractive to some people and some people may be attractive to other people. But in general, um, as a general rule, we can say there is certainly seems to be uh, within the human hierarchy of uh, looks, there seems to be some people who seem to have features that are pleasant to look at, right? They just seems to be. Um, now, of course, we're not talking about beauty. We're not talking about people's essence. We're not talking about people's soul. We're not talking about people's skill. We're not talking about their inherent value. What we're talking about is in terms of looking at somebody is it pleasant to look at them versus isn't it unpleasant and if we had a thousand people in a line and we were uh trying to or let's say we'll drum it down and we had 50 people in a line and we were trying to figure out are there some people who are more pretty to look at and are there some people who are less pretty to look at we would find that there seems to be a hierarchy and i say this because if you do not understand that there are these hierarchies in life um that there are these biases, that there are these um, principles um, and these archetypes and these patterns that seem to govern people's lives, you're already going to be on the back foot, especially if you are looking to get into sales. And the reason why I say that is that one of the things that helps um, in, uh, in being a sales assistant is understanding that there are certain things that you can possess um, or that you can accrue or acquire that will give you leverage that will give you an advantage and a huge part of it is to do with human psychology so for example we know that personality helps you may not be the necessarily the most good looking pe person um, I know people don't like it when I use a scale, but let's say we've got a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the most beautiful person in the world. I understand it's subjective, but let's just go with it. Um, and you are on a, on that scale, you're or an average, you're a five. There are some things such as personality that if you are able to hone, that give you an advantage. I've met people who are not very good looking and I've been in sales. I used to sell houses for a living um, and I was in that job for seven years. Um, and I will tell you that some of the most, the best salespeople um, weren't necessarily people who were good looking, but they had a bloody good um, uh, uh, personality. They were just nice people, right? What does that mean? A nice personality means you know who you are. Uh, a good personality means that you are interested in people, that you're curious, that you ask people questions, right? Um, that you genuinely um, understand are trying when you're asking questions of people you're trying to ask those questions so that you can figure out how can I help this person so at the core what you have to well, what I believe anyway and the, the way that I've thought about this and when I was in sales is I genuinely believe that every single person has something interesting that they can teach me that they can offer me i believe every single person has their own story and i'm always as i move through the world i'm always curious as to i wonder what this person's story is i wonder what they've been through i wonder how they've ended up here 
And I have found in my life that one of the things that's allowed me to be able to move forward and be able, I'm not the most good looking guy on a scale from one to 10. I'll probably say that I'm about a four out of 10, somewhere around there. Um, and what I have found is that I've been able to move through and meet people and get to places where usually I don't think people uh, do, but part of it is, and, and, I, and I'm going to go into the shadow aspect of myself and the go into the ego aspect of myself. And I would say that I'm, uh, my personality has been one of the things that's been in my advantage. I'm naturally very curious about people. I know who I am. I know what my advantages are and I know what my disadvantages are and I stay within my advantages. I know, for example, that as a person, I'm ridiculous ridiculously curious. I love to know stuff. I love to meet people. I love to know people's stories. So I tend to find places and things where I can be inquisitive about people. It's no surprise that I ended up becoming a counsellor, right? Counselling is all about finding out about people, finding out their stories, how you can help them. It's no surprise that I ended up doing sales because in sales, it's all about finding out about what people want, what they need, and then trying to help them match with match a product or the service that I was selling to whatever it is that they needed. So I would definitely say that there are some other things that do help beyond looks, which is one is personality. The other thing is passion, right? I have observed that there are, seems to be some people who are not the best looking or who are indeed good looking, but not only do they have a personality, but bloody hell, these people have a passion for something. These are the sorts of people who are unstoppable. Not only do people like being around them, they're pleasant to look at, but they're just funny and they know what their advantages are and they're curious. But on top of that, they have a mission, they have a purpose, they have a drive, they have a, something that they're trying to go after. In fact, one of the other things that I said on um, that I wrote down here is that one of the things that gives you an advantage in sales is to have a story right? How did you end up doing that job? And what I've noticed is that when you meet somebody who maybe is good looking or average looking um, or even ugly, of course, ugly is a subjective term, but we'll just go with it for the purpose of this conversation. Um, not only do they have a I'm not talking about an exceptional personality here. Or again, I know people don't like me using scales, but let's say their personality is a six or seven out of 10. But they also have passion and they have some sort of drive or purpose or mission of something that they're trying to solve or they're trying to get a PhD or they're trying to own a boat or they're trying to get into property renovations or that person's trying to become a millionaire. People seem to gravitate towards those people. Seem People seem to give those people opportunities because one of the things that I have realized is that when I used to, so I, for a huge amount of my life, I was working in restaurants and I used to get a lot of tips. I used to get a lot of tips. And I always wondered, why is it that some of my colleagues who I'm working with in the restaurant, they're not getting as many tips as I am. And one of the things that I began to realize is that people would always say to me, oh, how have you ended up doing this job? And I'd always say to people, I'm not doing this job. What I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to save money to buy my first house. And there was something about telling people that that seemed to motivate people to leave, leave me that extra two or three pounds or give me 10 pounds tip instead of five pound tip. And so what I would say is, if you can find your story or your mission or where you're trying to go um, and and refine it, it will be on it will be an advantage to you but also one of the other things is that you're going to get opportunities in your department that other people are not going to be able to get because people understand that if you naturally have a drive if you are naturally somebody who has a mission who has a purpose who you've gone through something and you're trying to overcome it one of the things or well, two of the things that you're going to have is that you're going to have discipline and you're going to have you're going to be somebody who can be who has accountability because you're gonna have understood that look things happen you can get disappointed people can betray you but you're a force that is to be reckoned with and you're gonna have you're gonna be even though you've had advantages and disadvantages and challenges you're gonna be somebody who's 
like okay like water and you just go around it you just go over it and those are the sorts of people who you need you want people who are creative you want people who invest to to, to to leave in charge or to give responsibility you want people who are problem solvers you want people who've got more momentum you want people who are natural leaders in their life right because if somebody can be a leader of their life then automatically the assumption is that perhaps they can be a leader over a department they can be a leader over a section they can be a leader over a product they can be a leader over uh, an incentive or uh, a, 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 an opening and ultimately they can be a leader over other people right i think it was john maxwell who said that the if you want to become a leader the first person you must lead is yourself um and so that that's what i would um uh, I, I would say but the last thing that i wrote down here is that if you look at some of the most successful people in terms of sales assistant and getting hired to become a sales assistant and becoming successful is you look at the pe the way people present themselves right there are some people right where you, when you meet them you're like my god i like the vibe of this person i like their energy i like the way that they dress i like the they take a certain appearance of themselves um certain uh they look sorry they're not the they take they present themselves in a certain way and the way that they present themselves in terms of their appearance it just fits it just works right and when I talk about presenting yourself, I'm not just talking about how you look. I'm talking about how you speak. I'm talking about how on time are you. I'm talking about your mode of communication. Do you call people instead of texting them? Instead of sending an email, do you go to the actual place where you want to get hired and give the CV in person, right? All of these are a form of presenting yourself because... It's different when someone texts you something to someone calling you about something. It's different if I came to your business and I emailed you versus I came into the business, I, to, into your business and I said, hi, my name is Kasim. I saw that you've got a sales assistant job. Um, I'm at the moment studying. I'm doing my A-levels or at the moment I'm doing my GCSEs or at the moment I'm at university. I'm hoping to get into property management. I'm hoping to become an accountant. And I'd like this job because I'd like to, I understand that out there at the moment it is really tough for people to be able to buy their own house. And I'd like to get an advantage over um, other people in the marketplace. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to use the money that I save from this job as a deposit over the next three or four, five, six, seven, eight years to be able to give me a leverage so that I can be the first person to buy a house by the time I reach 25 in my family. Um, and this is why I wanted to give you my CV because I think that I can really bring some uh, uh, some value and I can really help and I can um, I can really serve some of the customers that come into this shop and weirdly enough i am somebody who shops in this shop i've bought products i've met people i was just in here two days ago when i was buying something and that's how i ended up seeing the job advertisement let me tell you something that is a very different thing to reading somebody's email online or somebody's cv right and so as i say presenting yourself means if i go on your social media what am i going am i going to see we know from hiring that many people who are hiring managers hr managers are one of the first places they look at when they're hiring somebody is their social media presence they look at what is this person like right i say to people all the time that instagram is not a social media platform well technically it is so um instagram is a cv if somebody says to, if you meet somebody and they say to you that they are a photographer the first thing that the average person is going to say is do you have any social media why because they want to see do you have any stuff online what do people say do you have a website why are they asking because there are certain archetypes there are certain principles which is what i began off for saying right there are certain things that signal certain things when someone has a certain website when someone has an online presence and you can track them when you look at their cv when you look at where the person is volunteering when you look at what the person is studying for example if you look at me as kasim if you begin to look at what where have i been working look at my trainings my cpd courses uh, cpd is continual professional development it's like courses you can take after you've qualified 
um, you look at how I spend my time. You look at this um, this uh, uh, this video that I'm doing of you, or if you're listening to this this um, this episode, right? That I'm doing. If you look at my books, if you look at my journaling, if you look at my online presence, all of it is in line with everything that I'm where I'm trying to go. So. I don't know if any of that has been useful, but looks indeed do matter. But the other things also matter more or they can give you an advantage, which are your personality, your passion, um, your story and how you present yourself. I hope that's been useful. Um, if you have any questions um, or you want to post me something that you want me to answer, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, send me an email, all that fancy stuff. I don't need to tell you what to do. Um, thank you very, very much for listening. I really appreciate it. And I hope that this has added some value to the quality of your life. Bye for now.